So good morning, my name is Jura Karpiš. Uh, I'm from Slovakia, uh, from Bratislava. There is a think tank called Ines, and that's my think tank. I focus on money, so we will move from Spain through China back to the topic of the first speaker. Uh, I focus on monetary issues, monetary policy and finance, and today I would like to tell you something about uh, the past, the present and the future of money, and I think there is some exciting opportunity on the horizon, which I would like to talk about today. It's not a paper yet, so please bear with me. It's just ideas in development. Maybe it will be paper later. But on the other hand, I'm, I think I'm the first speaker who shows pictures today, so I will show you some pictures. Uh, okay, so let's start how the money started. Actually, we were by the sea uh, in June uh, with my family, and uh, my kids usually uh, collect shells and, and pieces of uh, glass as they are uh, on the beach. And I'm telling them that they are reliving the evolution of money because like, they are following their money monetary instinct and they pick what they think is most valuable. At the end of the vacation, I let them put all the valuable things on the table and let them, I ask them like, which one is the most valuable. And this time it was quite funny because uh, my daughter is pointing at, at one shell and does any, anyone of you know cowrie this shell? shell? Yeah, exactly. That's the cowrie shell. That was the most popular money in the world till the 18th century. It was more spread as a money than silver and gold. Actually, in Chinese, money sign is based on this shell. And, and my kids picked it by themselves. I didn't tell them anything and they found the real money uh, on the beach, uh, which I'm very proud of. You can see it like it was used everywhere, all over the world. You could buy a slave in Africa for four shells, four cowrie shells. And it, you can even find it in Slovakia. This is like a traditional goral hat. Uh, guys like uh, chopping woods and selling it downstream. They were wearing cowrie shells on their heads. Uh, they, they traded them uh, in the Middle East for, for, for textiles. So it was really, really spread. But the uh, my point in this story is that the money is uh, with us for such a long time that uh, we, even my kids can pick the money and, and find it. And money had different uh, forms throughout the history. It depended on the technology and on the scarcity of the stuff that was used to create the money story. And it was like uh, shells and uh, small pieces of, uh, uh, from, from bones or, or everything. But the point is like it's already with us for about 100, well, nobody knows for sure, but at least 100,000 100, years it developed. For example, there are uh, in, uh, in the U US, like uh, on the West Coast, there are Indians that used dentalium, that's another shell. Uh, these are, uh, it was used as a money. And I, I jokingly related to the Bitcoin, I said this is the first cold wallet, uh, because like, it's, it's a wallet for, for this dentalium shell. People used to wear their money on themselves, like because on the one hand you, you can it's safe if you have, have it on you. On the other hand, you can show off, show your status, how, how wealthy you are. And these are this is Lamborghini from, from the past because like this guy was very, very rich because he had so much uh, so much money on himself. This tradition, you can still see it like in, in today's society. For example, this is a wedding in Slovakia from 2016, and the bride is wearing her money. Like these are 500, 500 euro notes and 100 euro notes. So you, you can see it like the story of money stays the same, just the technology changes. The money changes as, as it is, but uh, the story is the, all the same. Well, and this is our prime minister. He's showing off with our money, like he's like offering some prize money for something. It's not important what, but still people like to show off their money uh, in, a, in various ways. Let's, let's move from the past closer to the, to the present, like this uh, after, after the shells and small pieces of everything, we move to gold. This is the first gold artifact found, well, thought to be the first, is like 4,500 uh, years before Christ. It was found uh, on today's Romania's uh, place, but this is like, this was probably used as money, as a, as a bet uh, on, on a string. Then we moved to gold standard. It ended somewhere in 1913 or 1971, to be precise, because then we left the gold. And after, after, the, uh, after the 
after we all left behind the commodity money, you can see that the inflation started to rise. We got our fiat money. Uh, fiat money, as we know, as we Austrians know, create bubbles because, like, if you if you have highly elastic money, then you just and 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 central authority that controls the money. The central authority misuses the, its, its control, inflates the money supply, buys stuff, buys, buys power with it, and creates bubbles. Uh, this is, everything is known stuff, uh, especially thanks to the Austrian, Austrian economics. Uh, right now, I would argue we are going through this phase right now, because like, this is the monetary authority on the left. He is leaving now. There will be another one. But basically, right now we are through, living through the uh, boom, boom phase, uh, which means that the, the, the central bank, the, the, which controls the money, is trying to stimulate the economy with the new money, creating new, new, uh, new entries into these ledgers. Everybody likes the boom because, like in Slovakia, you can see right now you can get the mortgage like two percent below inflation rate. Can you imagine that you take out 30 years debt and you pay 1% in a country which has 3% inflation? Basically, you pay people to go into debt, so they will gladly do it. And it means that uh, house prices are rising, uh, the debt of households is rising. So we have a boom phase, which will be for sure followed by the bust phase, as we Austrians know. Uh, nobody knows when will it start, but it will come. But this was just to illustrate the, like how important is the uh, this the money the, and what, what is money money is database money is basically memory of the society of good deeds okay it's a, it's, it's a memory it's, it it's used it was used as a memory it's used as a memory today if i do something good to you you pay me so there somewhere in the uh, in the database is written i have a 100, 100 euro uh, note that's the statement, that's the evidence that I helped somebody uh, add the value approximately of 100 uh, euros. But if you, if you don't have very stable and secure database, then you create uh, this coordination, you create mistakes in the society. And that's, for me, that's, that's the best description of what uh, fiat money does. So, like, if you centralize this power, in one place, and this centralized power creates new entries into this database, then you create mistakes and uh, you lower the informational value of prices and you create this coordination. And now my, my story is like, what will, happen, what will happen next? Like right now, the, this database is not very high quality. It's not stable, it's not secure, because it's like uh, uh, controlled by, by powerful people. And what will come next? Okay, we know it is not working properly, but how, will, will there be a new competitor that will challenge this uh, uh, state monopoly? And it's difficult because, like, till now, nothing, uh, nothing really worked. Like, I cannot print new notes because I will go into the jail because uh, the institution that owns this building doesn't like competition, so it's not allowed to compete officially it's officially with their money. Uh, so, so the solution appears to be what, what happened like in 2009. Uh, after the crisis, I was pissed off because like it was so clear what happened and no, nobody, uh, uh, the, the mainstream economics like appeared not to knowing. So I have written a book called Bad Money. But there was another guy, Satoshi Nakamoto, that has written a white paper. And I would argue his product is quite more successful than mine, at least judged by market capitalization. But basically what he did is he, and I would argue, many Austrians don't like Bitcoin, I don't know why, but I would argue that the Bitcoin is probably the most uh, successful project of Austrian economics in the last decades. Because if you really go deep and you start to understand that Bitcoin is based on Austrian economics, it's based on our view of money and what it did bef uh, before. And Bitcoin managed to reprivatize money and decentralize money. Like put the, this memory, this so societal DNA back into the hands of people. 
And there are many parallels, like for example, you were talking about cost of money, and some people complain about cost of Bitcoin, like this nonsensical proof of work thing. And I would tell them, no, there was always some cost of money, because this cost of money works as a lock on the value of the money. It, it, it secures the database, and this is like Raystone, and you, you clearly see this is the original proof of work. Like you had to really work hard to create this disk that, were, uh, that was used as money. Uh, later. Okay, so Bitcoin is distributed. It's even better than to have it just decentralized. Right now, it's used mainly as a, a parallel payment system. This is a transaction of almost 1 billion US dollars. It was 933 million dollars sent like one month ago, and it cost three, uh, three US dollars and took like two minutes. And probably it wasn't like uh, uh, certified or allowed or uh, uh, nobody, nobody asked for permission to send that much money in one transaction. Now, this is very useful uh, case of using Bitcoin even now, I, I would argue, because you don't have to use normal banks, you can sidestep them. But the question is, like, is it money? Do you think, who thinks that Bitcoin is right now money? Okay. I would argue against it, because in my opinion, store of value is one thing, like this payment system is another thing, but very important uh, function of money is uh, unit of account. And in my talk, like, I don't know how much time do I have left? Five minutes, so I will speed it up. Uh, I would like to argue that this is the most important function of money, the unit of account. And let me explain you why. I was giving a talk in Paralnapolis, maybe you know the, the place in Prague. There's a place where you can pay only with Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. They don't accept any other money. Fiat. They don't accept even check fiat money. And I asked them, what's the price of coffee in Bitcoin? Nobody knew. Even though they are selling the coffee there, they have to use check crowns as a translation into the Bitcoin sphere. Even the guys that were selling the coffee didn't know the price in Bitcoin. And I'm, I think that that's important because what these prices are, the most important thing of this memory, societal memory, uh, is this in infrastructure of relative prices. Because that's what we use money for. So we know, we have the feeling what is expensive and what is cheap. We have the feeling for how much we should trade our goods and services. And I think till we, uh, the, the successful competitor of Fiat has to take over this infra infrastructure of the fiat money. We have to take over this unit of account uh, function of money. And let, this is the holy grail. I, I don't think any money will succeed in competition with the fiat if they don't take over the unit of account function. And to give you some evidence, why do I think it? The same happened to, to gold and silver. Fiat didn't take the gold and silver. Well, in the US they did, like for sure they confiscated some gold, but they, they, they didn't take the whole gold and silver supply. They took the name. They took the name of the weight of silver, in the case of dollar, and so they took the infrastructure in our heads, our databases in all our heads, and, and used it. So the next successful competitor has to do the same to the fiat money. And just to illustrate, uh, maybe you can go deeper into these uh, examples. They, are, they were found out by Selgen, but in uh, Som Somalia, Somalia, they were using Somalian shillings, uh, even, and they are using them still even after the central bank uh, uh, keys to exist in 1991. These, they, are, they are still using this paper money, not back, backed by anything, any gold or any authority, and they are using it just because the people still have in their heads uh, this infrastructure of relative prices, monetary unit, unit of account. Okay, let's end my presentation with uh, positive outlook into the future. What changed and what Bitcoin achieved, in my opinion, is that uh, blockchain technology uh, opened possibility, theoretical possibility of creating competitor to fiat money, which will be able to take over this infrastructure. And in my opinion, there are three, three conditions that have to be fulfilled by this new cryptocurrency. It doesn't exist yet, so I won't tell you the name of the token you should buy and be rich after this talk. But in my opinion, there, are, there have to be three conditions fulfilled. First, 
it has to be packed to the fiat and reasonably uh, well packed. And there are many, many strategies how you can pack it. You, you either collateralize it with fiat or digital currencies or, or something else. But at the end of the day, I shouldn't have, well, I, I, I shouldn't be able to make a difference between uh, digital euro and digital Bitcoin euro. So if it's packed to euro, uh, uh, for a long time, and I'm sure it will stay packed. I will regard it as euro, use it as euro, pay as with it as, as with euros. The second condition is it has to be decentralized. Why? Because you you see what happened to uh, Mr. Zucker, uh, Zuckerberg and uh, and other guys that try to come up with Libra. Uh, they will go, go after you if you create this kind of money. They will go after you and close you down. So so it has to be decentralized. Otherwise, the centralized guy will uh, end up in, in prison. And the third condition is related to the second. It has to be anonymous because if it if it if it build, uh, will come up, uh, then then uh, uh, it will be illegal to use it. Like in my opinion, every successful competitor to fiat money will be will will uh, will be regulated and will be illegal. So anonymity is is key. And and if you if you come up with the cryptocurrency that is uh, that is like uh, packed to the fiat, is anonymous and decentralized, I think you have a black hole for uh, fiat money. Because can, if you imagine what will happen, then people will not recognize uh, my bank di digital euros from crypto euros. So there won't, there, won't, there won't be any difference, and they will, all the people will use it, and, and everybody will become his own central bank. And this is not the end phase. Because as you can imagine, if everybody is his own central bank, there is like unlimited inflation going on. So this will be like shift from to another another monetary unit or another system, but I think this is the only way how you can push out the uh, the fiat money and and win in this competition, not that free competition with the fiat money. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you. Are the, is there a question already? Yeah, uh, thank you for the presentation. That was very interesting. Um, I have a question for a clarification. You said that Bitcoin should be packed to fiat money? It won't be a Bitcoin. Like, but or can, any cryptocurrency? Yeah, any, the, the new cryptocurrency that yeah. would be successful. And then also you said it would be important to preserve the distributive distributed or decentral nature of cryptocurrencies, yeah. but yeah. how can you preserve that when you pack it to something that is centrally planned, in essence? There is a cryptocurrency called DAO today that is, well, relatively decentralized, but not totally, so, so there are some weak points. But there is a way, you can use smart contracts. Uh, I don't know how familiar So you would you have to change the nature of the fiat money first, right, in order to make that work? No. You can use you can use digital assets to collateralize this like stable coin by the way of smart contract you can use like this layer about the blockchain uh, you code smart contracts in it and you I as a as a new central bank will put some bitcoins in it and it will be uh, some new digital euros will be created in the value of the bitcoins that I de deposited but there, there doesn't have to be any institution any human involved in it it's just like code it's a smart contract that uh, emits these new new euros into the existence, and it, uh, and you can use them. So, so it doesn't have to be necessarily centralized to be backed to anything. Okay, thank you. But it's difficult. It's really difficult because there are runs. So and and there are there is huge fluctuation in price of the digital assets. So I'm not saying it's easy. I think there is theoretical theoretical possibility of it happening, but it has huge consequences for the current system. Uh, thank you. Uh, Georgi Gane from Bulgaria, and this is important for my question. I'm speaking from experience. When the dollar basically replaced the LEV as a unit of account, everybody was thinking in dollars, in prices and coffee and everything. When we had a hyperinflationary, short, relatively, experience in 1997, 
at no moment before that the dollar was ever pegged to the LEV. Why do you require a peg instead of just an ongoing exchange rate, even if fluctuating? Because I think that's, uh, that's the only way, well, I don't require anything. I, that's my estimate of the situation, like what I expected from the successor competitor. But I think if there is fl fluctuation between the currency that wants to compete with fiat and the fiat, then you, can, you cannot really use your uh, infrastructure price, relative price infrastructure in your head of the fiat. And that's the most important thing because like, learning new relative prices is like learning new language. And the same, like I had a great, great home and she was like counting prices in Slovak rounds till she died. It was like 10 years after the Euro introduction, almost 10 years after the Euro introduction. So people don't want to learn new languages. People don't want to learn new relative prices in new currency. That's why I think the successful competitor has to be like relatively goodly, uh, well packed to the fiat. So for ordinary people, it's like fiat. It's the same as fiat. Because like, you don't really think about like, if I send you euros by way of banks, like with the wire, you don't think about this, like, if, if these are real euros, not real euros, it's just, it's just euros. It's the name euros, so you know the value. If I send you euros by the way of this new cryptocurrency, and it stays the same, like the price stays the same, for, it, for you it's like same as euros and you will use it as euros. That's why I think that that's, the cru that's very important to, to keep the peg, not to let it fl fluctuate, because otherwise it's a new currency, it's, it's a new system, new language, new database, new, new standard. Okay, thank you.